Hello and welcome to week 48 of My Wild Life Year. Um, another short one this week. Um, getting to the end of the year, there's not as much about because it's winter and that, but that's not the main reason it's short. I could go out and I'm sure I could find something. It's just I've been really busy with work. Um, I've got, had a couple of um, bits of work come up that have taken up a bit of time. So I've been sitting in front of the laptop, which in, uh, and also just uh, like preparing some stuff. Not the most interesting st uh, stuff to actually video, so I haven't bothered to do that. So anyway, um, short one again, but let's ca crack on and we're going to start with some visitors that were in the garden right at the end of November. And the first one might surprise you because you might think it'd been hibernation by now. So, hedgehog is still out and about. Maybe be surprised to see it out and about, thinking it may be hibernating, but as I've said before in my wildlife here videos, hedgehogs will be quite active during the winter. Um, they don't sleep constantly. Really the only ones uh, that sleeps constantly are some of the bats and the um, dormouse. But hedgehogs will actually get up and about, uh, out and about if it's mild enough and they're hungry. So they go out for uh, looking for some tea. So, really nice to see it's still active and eating and also quite a nice variety of birds. And speaking of birds, it's really important at this time of year, uh, especially, to put out some water for the birds, as you'll see here. After a couple of weeks of evicting all the mice, I've had to get another one back in, so take this one out and get it out of the trap. But at least it's my big humane trap that is in, so it's rather than one of the long ones. So I know that the, the trap's still working. So I've got it tipped out in the bag, so I'll just get it out and see what sex it is. Thought it looked quite a pointy sort of like rear end here from above and it is indeed a male. So you've been evicted. This isn't really a myth busting bit, but what it is is just to warn you, and I've probably mentioned this throughout the, my wildlife here uh, at some point, um, is to warn you, don't believe everything you read in the books. The wildlife doesn't read the books that we write about it, and sometimes you'll read something in there, uh, and you know it'll be just totally wrong. Good point. In fact, is um, hedgehog poo. Hedgehog poo. They'll say is just about that to maybe about that in length. I find hedgehog poo as long as that before. Um, it's just sort of like so. Some of the things that are in the books, it says. If it says it is fact, it might not be quite fact. There's always exceptions. So, and a good another example is I've got books uh, from the 1980s and 1990s uh, wildlife books, uh, fairly in my living memory, written in my living memory, and they've got facts in them that are just actually wrong. That we found out actually that's not the case. Um, 
Not surprisingly, um, the ba- bo- one of the books I'm thinking about is a Bat book that was written in the, I think, the mid 80s, if I remember right. And it says there's, I think, 14 species of bats. Um, one of the species in Nathusius, they say, is maybe an occasional visitor. Um, it's not one of the 14. Actually, it was probably here. No one was just looking for it. It's now common and wide. No, not common. It's widespread throughout the UK. It's quite a rare bat, but it's widespread. Um, but it's quite you know commonly found if you go looking in the right habitats. So yeah, so just don't believe everything you read in the books. Um, you know, and it's not surprising actually that things like bats are wrong uh, when you think about it. Um, you know, when we've got a quarter of the species of bats, roughly, that have known in the world have been discovered this century. So that's in the last 20 odd years that a quarter of the bat species that we know about, um, that basically, there's about, I think, 1,450, I think it is at the minute, species of bats when I first started doing bat walks. Um, you know, in the sort of late 90s, I was talking about 950, so 500 of them. Um, that, so is actually, is that a third? It's closer, probably closer to a third, the species. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's amazing. Um, so yes, so don't believe everything you read in the books. And if you see something and you think, that's not what the books say, don't discount it as you've been wrong. It could just be that the wildlife has just decided to do something other than what's written in the books because they can't read. So that's uh, my wildlife year week 48 uh, over and done with. Um, looking forward to week 49. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, bits of work coming up and one of them I might feature in the video. I, I'm actually doing an in-person training workshop next week which I'm really excited about. Uh, it's just going to be so good to actually be in front of someone rather than doing it v- uh, virtually or, uh, through the screen. I have done in-person bat walks but they're events rather than training. This will be my first training event, probably face-to-face training event in two and a half, three years. So um, I have to say I'm really excited about it. A bit nervous as well because I'm out of practice. So we'll see how that goes. So See you next week for My Wildlife Year, week 49. Stay safe and keep enjoying the wildlife.